Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for joining. Uh, today we're going to be tying a favorite of mine. It's called the uh, Steelhead Seducer Nymph. Uh, kind of just like a big stonefly, but technically a nymph. Um, and in the vise, I have a size 10 streamer hook uh, with a gold bead and 0 0.020 lead-free wire. Um, if you want to tie along, um, here's some of the materials you're going to need. So like I said, get your, get your hook, get your bead, um, put, uh, throw on some 0 0.020. Um, you could even get away with 0 0.025, um, whatever you have on hand. Um, we are going to need some pink goose biots. Going to need cheeky UV. Um, I use this just because it, it's awesome, but you could also get away with some dubbing, just regular sort of steelhead, a flashy color type of dubbing. Um, we're gonna be using some medium silver wire for uh, like a ribbing. We're gonna be using some black scud back. Some pearl tinsel. This is gonna be more for like a, like a wing case. And for this fly, I'm gonna be also using some um, Fly Enhancer Legs by Hairline. Um, I'm gonna be using this color specifically just because I absolutely love it. And again, it really flashes um, when the UV lights hit it. So uh, Crazy Legs um, are a fantastic option as well. They're more of like a, like a thread-like material. These ones are, are rubber slash silicone. So um, really whatever you have on hand, this fly can be tied in like a hundred different colors. So by all means, um, use whatever you have on hand. Uh, for the thread, I'm actually, I'm gonna be using a 12 uh, uh wax thread by Semperfly, uh, which is fantastic. You could use an ADOT as well for this size of fly. I like to go uh, thinner just I like to have more control. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so before that, let's put on some music. Let's get the jams going. Here we go. So let's get started. We're gonna put our thread just behind the uh, lead wire there, lead free wire, I should say. And I'm just gonna build up a dam behind it so it's not moving around. And this fly actually really benefits from having, I guess, an overly dramatic uh, tapered body. I just, I find it looks, it looks better. Now I'm just gonna secure down these lead free wire a bit. Now I'm gonna work my way back, start tying on my tail with your goose biots. So what I'm gonna be doing here as well is I'm actually gonna be building up a pretty big ball at the end to help splay out my tail. Now grab your goose biots, find two equal size ones, and like most use of the goose biots, you want to have these, you want to have one of them flipped so that they splay out. So you got two, flip one over so they do that. You can tie on both at the same time if you're good uh, at doing it. I am not, I will openly admit that. So I tie on one at a time. I like to put two or three loose wraps, get it in position, make sure it's at a length I like. 
and then holding it down, I'll kind of just sort of secure it and lock it in place. I'm gonna grab my other biot now. Same thing, just put it in place, make sure it lines up nice, hold it down. And again, two or three loose wraps allows you to play with it. Right. Hold it down again, and now put in your securing tighter wraps. So just before I get to the where the lead wire was, is where I'll nip off those ends. And again, that's gonna help keep that dramatic taper on this body. You can see how that kind of just flowed in smoothly to the upper portion of the fly. All right, so I wanna keep that very slender look. I could tighten up the tail a bit more, but I'm gonna wait. I am now gonna grab my medium gold wire, uh, silver wire, I should say. And you only need a bit. What I like to do, I think on, I'd say 95% of the flies, it always comes with a little notch. Just one unravel and stick it back in there is, is plenty. And then from here, I'll go, I'll, I'll flip the fly over and start from the underbody. And I'll put that right close to the bead. Um, sometimes I'll put it in the bead to help just secure it in place. And once I have it in there, I'll start securing it down. that nice rice and right close to the tail and now I also have to consider I'm gonna be tying in that cheeky UV material so I'm gonna go about that far so here's that cheeky UV fluorescent pink stuff's phenomenal check this out can't really tell but when that UV light hits it, it it's it's amazing so I'm just gonna grab a fairly long strand of this so I like to grab a bit more of this than let's say like we did with the wire uh, just because I like to have room to to make my wraps nice and tight. Now you can tie this in on the side of the fly. And this is about where I want my, that wing case and my legs and all that stuff to start. So I'm gonna keep my thread there, maybe just a bit more, cause I'm gonna be tying back anyway. So we're gonna grab that cheeky UV and you're gonna start your wraps. And I kind of like to do um, not touching wraps. They're like overlapping just a tad over each other. That should do it. 
going to secure that down. the wire you can wrap normal direction, you can counter wrap it. Um, I traditionally just counter wrap everything even though you don't really need to. And just some nice even segments. You can go wider or smaller if you want. And then once I have that in place, Secure that down and here's the important part always just keep that tension on your thread or on your bobbin because if I were to let go with my with the wire with my right hand it's going to start to unravel so keeping that tension make sure it doesn't unravel okay and then we're going to do some securing wraps in front a couple in back I probably overdo it but I'm paranoid and again keeping that tension now you can helicopter that out Boom. Now I'm gonna bring it back now to where I wanna start my wing case and my thorax, put my legs on. There you go. So for the thorax, I'm actually going to put a little bit on because we're going to be using more goose biots, but I don't want them to sit like right against the fly. I do want them to come out a bit. So I like to put a little bit of the thorax dubbing to help just space it out a bit. And I think I'm going to go with this fluorescent pink. So this is actually an uh, Antron Bright. This is steel head dubbing, um, super, super bright, different colors. Uh, so again, I'm gonna go with that fluorescent pink. And I'm just grabbing a, just a touch. Cause again, I don't wanna put too much yet. Cause we still got a bunch of other stuff to tie on. This is just for those goose buyout legs that we're gonna be putting on. Grab some more of your goose biots. I'm gonna cut off two here. And you want the just like the tail, you want them to display outwards, not in. You'll see the natural curvature of the wing of the biot. So just flip it over so that it's going outwards. I like these ones to be no longer than the body of the fly. So I'll just do one, two little light wraps. Get that in place. Grab my other goose by up. So those are all just sort of light wraps. I didn't pull any tension on it or anything. Now that allows me to play with them and get them in place. So you can see I kind of want that, that look right there. And as you tighten it and put tension, it's gonna start to splay out those biots a bit more. You can see that's happening right now. So I'll wrap those up a bit, get them really nice and secure, and then I'll nip off the ends.
All right, so now what we're gonna do is, before we start tying on the thorax, I am going to put on our pearl tinsel. You don't need a long piece at all for this. That's and that's way overdoing it. I can probably tie two or three more flies with that. So I'm just gonna get that centered. One, two, three little uh, light wraps. Get it in position and then lock it down. From there, I'm gonna get our scud back. And same thing, cut off the same length. You could do an angled or like a triangular cut to help tie it in. So you have something like that. Don't need to. As long as the as long as it's centered at the end of the day. nice and centered. And I'm really going to crank down and wrap this up. And as you, before you get too far back, always just sort of do a double check to sort of see where things stand. And I'm going to go a little bit further back here. I got a little bit of a bigger wing case going on today. Good. So just to sort of show you what I've been looking at and trying to accomplish is as I'm tying, I'm constantly just sort of flipping it forward to see where I'm at. So when this comes, when I'm ready to tie this, that's what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna leave that back there for now. We're gonna get some more of your steelhead dubbing. Now this particular dubbing actually, it dubs really nice. It, it wraps really nice. Um, you can get really thin noodles, um, which I'm a fan of. Uh, just more control. So what we're gonna do is again, we're not gonna put too much on, because I'm still gonna tie on some nice rubber legs. But I wanna just cover up sort of that hot mess that was all underneath that you couldn't see before. So right in the middle now is where I'm going to start tying these awesome legs. So I just cut off two strands. And because they're multicolored, they got this sort of green, yellow, and pinkish um, color to them. You could sort of manipulate them to sort of to, to suit what colors you want to show. I want some of that pink to show, so I'm going to tie right in the middle of the green, the yellow there. I'm going to do a couple light wraps. Move that into position. I'm gonna grab my other strand. One or two light wraps. And then just sort of make sure that's where you want it. And you can sort of give it a nice little tug, crank down on it. If you want to make things a little easier on yourself, if you're, for, if you're tying this fly for the first time, you can nip off the legs at a desired length. Um, I like mine a little longer. I'm going to leave them for now. And now we're ready to almost complete this fly um, with some final dubbing and get this all cleaned up. So 
So at this time, you can also use the dubbing to your benefit and help spread out your legs if you want. See how that works? Just gonna get some more here. Oh, here's a tip for you beginners. Um, when you're dubbing, spin one way. Don't ever like back and forth spin. Spin just one way. When I first started, I used to do it all the time and I'm like, why isn't my noodles coming out nice? Something I found out the hard way. All right, so I'm just gonna get a smidgen more just to get it closer to the bead there. So now before I start peeling this back, I actually take a look all the way around to see what I can improve. And you can see that underside of that fly, I know likey. So more dubbing. And this is where the comes in handy because, again, you can tie it super thin and just adjust your wraps as needed. Not quite covered yet. Okay, just make sure that thing is covered and you can cheat and just go right to the bead. Then we'll brush some of that out just to clean it up and make it look a little bit better. But now I'm gonna tie on the scud back first. You got thin skin, I think anything will do. And I'm just gonna do, again, a light wrap. Get that in position. Secure it down. Now with this stuff, it's cool. You can just kind of stretch it out. You don't want to pull too hard, but if you stretch it out, you can get really nice and tight to that bead. Pull your tinsel over. One light wrap, make sure it's in place. And then lock her down. like so. So at the end of the day, it should look like that. I'm happy with that. And before I lose everything, I'm gonna throw in some whip finishes. You could build up a collar if you want. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And there you have it. So now depending on how long you want your legs, this traditional seducer, the legs are pretty long. Um, so I'll start sort of, I'll bring the back legs back and then I'll cut where the tail ends. And then I'll see from there. How things look. So 
always easier to adjust and make shorter so you can't make it longer after. All right, so there's one super, that's pretty, those legs are pretty long, but again, change it up. If you're gonna be tying two or three, four of these, change it to different lengths, different movement in the water, right? So last thing we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be covering the wing case with some Golf uh, Classic UV resin. With all resins, always sometimes air bubbles so just be just be cognizant of that you don't need that much on this fly so what I like to do is I'll lay it down let it sit and then with a Bob can I'll come in here and adjust it and just make sure I'm covering that wing case and those thread wraps that's the most important there that's good grab your UV light oh look at that boom you can see how that much, how much, how that thing shines. I always try to envision my flies in the water. How are they going to look in the water? Different water levels, different water conditions. Um, this is a fly I'll use in like very chocolate uh, water. And you can see like, just imagine the sun rays hitting it as it's drifting or as you're sort of jigging it, it's gonna be doing that to the fly. So that's, that's awesome. There we go. UV light too long. So that's it folks. That is a steelhead seducer. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you tied along. Hope you had fun. Catch you in the next video. Cheers.